particular species of trees for your workshop, I think we can talk about getting those to you. Um, beach is desirable, and maybe it's just coming up with a list of wood that would be of interest, and then our forestry staff would, would document what they're removing, and we could certainly make that list. Yep. The, the beach trees, they spoke real easy. Real quick too, yes. Black and we've taken down two huge beaches in the last couple years because they are literally rotting from the center, and they're a huge liability issue for us. So. Black locust is really nice to work with too. <laughs> is it? Yeah. I can't see who's telling me that. Oh. <laughs> Let's make a, we'll make a deep, we'll go to the inshore, it's conservation area. Right. What, what do you, I mean, it's a very dense wood. Yeah, dense is better. Dense is better. Yeah. But what sort of diameter? Any diameter. Any bigger, diameter? Bigger, better. We, I'll show up with my chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might be some health and safety issues there. We, we have stop that can do that, but I, I mean, I like to see a balance. In most cases, in some cases, if we're removing a tree from a forest, we typically leave it there because it's going to recycle. And but there are cases where we have managed properties that that we are. Yeah. So we can talk. In, in terms of these maple leaves, and what, what are you looking for? Just to have them cut out. Cut out, and um, I know Don and I talked about what the best technique would be to put a name, uh, the sponsor name, on that piece of wood, whether it be wood burning or yeah. some other. How many other. would you need of those? Probably, I would say 50 to start. 50 but blanks to start. 50 blanks. What we're hoping to do with that project is the festival operates 13 days. We're looking for sponsors, 13 sponsors a day for 13 days to get 139 families out to the Maple Syrup Festival who wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity to go. So we know um, we've got some social, economically challenged communities, and we want to make sure that we um, give them the experience. What would you need them by? Well, the 50 planks I can do. Can you do them? Quickly. No hurry. That, that's no hurry. Right. Um, this pro again, this here's our challenge. We come up with these great ideas, and then how the heck do we get that out there? So um, our goal this year is to find uh, one sponsor for 13 families on one day. So, but 50 leaves would, would certainly cover us. Yeah. What other hardwoods do you have in the forest? <laughs> <laughs> Easy. All of them. <laughs> All of a sudden she wants to leave. I don't know why. <laughs> Sounds like your, your education center needs a little wood shop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the trees, we use quite a bit are cedar, so a lot of times we're, we're going into our own bush to remove the cedar, and I'm obviously we use it for tree posts and other things. Um, certainly our, the beech trees are, are challenging. Would you consider tilia, um, basswood? Would you consider that soft or hard? Basswood soft, it's good for carving. Soft, but good for carving. Good for carving. Um, we certainly have that. Oak, mostly red oak, but, but, um... I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> if it's free... Free or interested. Well, and as I said, if you can give me a list, and our forestry staff are aware of that list as they're doing their removals, because sometimes for us, if there's a trail and there's a hazard tree, the tree, tree has to go, unfortunately, because we're permitting public access. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes we move the trail because it's in an area where the trees are just of, of, more, of greater value to leave them there. So we'll, we'll alter the trail. But we, we can talk. All right, let's just okay. stay focused. Yeah, guys. not a lot of walnut. Um, so I just thought I would make a list of some of the benefits. Obviously, healthy watersheds. You, you are right now in the Oshawa Creek watershed. Um, Increasing biodiversity, when we talk about um, some of those projects, like the turtle nesting structures, our long-term goal is to make sure that some of those turtles that are species adverse become um, common species.
collaboration. Obviously, you're good at that. You've got some great partnerships that uh, keep you busy, keep you out of trouble. Social capital, it's kind of nice to do things in your own community and see the benefits. Uh, awareness and exposure, uh, we'll show you, uh, we'll make sure that you get recognition. We are very good at being quiet, silent partners and uh, talking up what our folks are doing out there on the landscape. So between our website, uh, the Maple Leaf program, uh, we have a brick recognition program, we do a newsletter, we, we have a fairly wide audience, we do an annual report on our projects and highlight the work of our partners. And actually I just finished a list of our 2015 accomplish, accomplishments for our chair to read at our upcoming board meeting. And the last sentence in there is, we would not have made these accomplishments without our partners. And our entire staff recognize that we have a huge task ahead of us every day and uh, those partnerships are key, so is recognition. Um, the skills exchange, I, I think some of those projects would offer our staff some insight into how to do things differently. And environmental education, I think, is probably the biggest outcome. And it doesn't matter whether you're this high or this high or um, what age, what language you speak. We, we all need to do a better job um, helping our environment. So, sorry, I got ahead of myself. That's the list of things we already talked about. We often do project signage. I didn't mention that. Social media, my personal favorite, we'll tweet you, we'll Facebook you, we'll do all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we do often use our news releases to get media coverage. So we do um, a lot of, a lot of times I think we get media coverage because what we're doing is unusual, not very common. So there seems to be a lot of interest from the community. And I think that's it. In terms of <coughs> development, I don't know what you mean, carrying weight. Yeah, we, we, one time we used to do it with the Highway 2 and Curtis Road. Yes. <coughs> which backs up just a marsh area there. And we wanted to plant flowers in there, and, and they, they got a notice and told us they can't do that. Plant flowers? Yeah, it was a big mistake. But anyway, mm -hmm. I hear other things are focuses, oh, you can't come in and do that. I'm just curious as how you, who backs you in, in terms of. Well, our, our board is made up of regional councillors, so that's really who we report to, and they represent you as citizens of Durham Region. That's so, the of getting who backs you when you say no or yes or no. Um, for the most part, we're following the provincial policy on planning, PPL, I think it's called. So, so that's what guides us in making those decisions. In your case, the I mean, I'd have to explore it a little more to understand the depth of, of the concerns. But um, very often people will buy a property, and a portion of that property is in our regulated area. So it really limits what you can do on that property. And so one of the, the ways that we try and work with the community is before you buy that property, come and see us to see if what you want to do on that property is doable. Yeah. And we might suggest to you, uh, you being too close, uh, we might suggest to you that's not the right property. And I'll give you an example. There was a property on Whitby, a person bought it, wanted to do a horse farm and the, the arena and all of that kind of stuff. And there was not enough of a developable footprint on that property before they got into floodplain wetland, all of those things. So it wasn't the right property for that. So, so sometimes it's getting the horse in front of the cart and um, we've had, oh, in most cases, we're going to try and work with you to achieve your goals, but sometimes it's just the nature of that piece of property that's the limiting. In fact, there's a bit of a, a joke in our planning department, we're dream crushers. 
because very often we'll get someone coming in, they want to build that palatial garage that they've been dreaming about or that swimming pool, and there just isn't the footprint on that particular piece of property to do it, even with some um, construction practices to mitigate because the ultimate is in a floodplain. If you're going to fill it, you're impacting the ability of that floodplain to contain water during a storm event. That's kind of the short and the long of it. So you try and balance your cut and fill. That's um, one piece that we would look at for the development of a, a property. Or if you're putting in a, an addition, maybe you can't put in a basement just because the groundwater levels that we've been monitoring in that particular area are really high. So it's just going to compromise the structure that you're building. So most of our planning staff are, their goal is to balance development and, and protecting property. So we have to look at that piece. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much for coming and uh, discussing this. I've been through some of these before. I think as a club, we'll talk about, we'll get together some okay. more, talk about it what we can do. Some of these are quite easy, like the, the Maple Leafs. That's a, putting names on, we'll have to discuss how we can do that. Yeah. But other than that, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Here's a little Oh, is there beer in that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's you oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. We thought Kathy was coming. Oh, I'll share. <laughs>